This episode sponsored by Wink and Nod. Visit them at winkandnod.com. Welcome to Common Man Cocktails. I'm your host, Derek Schoenberg. Today, we are at Wink and Nod, and we're going to make some cocktails. We're going to do what? What are we doing, Curtis? Five? Uh, six. Six cocktails. What are you going to make? And who, what's your name? Brian. Brian Mance. Brian. All right. And you're going to create a cocktail for us. Now, you are a bartender here at Wink and Nod? Correct. And how, how long have you been doing this? Uh, forever. Really? Yeah. Long time. Okay, longer than me then, because I'm on like six years and I only play bartender on TV. I never sat here. I've been bartender for like 15 years. This is this is all weird to me. There's like stuff all around. It's pretty cool. 15 years? Yeah. What are we going to make? I'm going to make a scotch cocktail with scapa, called the scapa cabana. Scapa cabana. Uh, it's going to be interesting because it's a uh, tiki cocktail. What are we using for a glass? Uh, I'm just going to serve it in a coupe. Okay. Not all okay. tiki has to be in crazy. But crazy glassware is awesome. I know. All right, so then you have scotch. That's scotch right there, the scapa. Correct. It's and an Irish scotch. It's Irish. Isla. Isla. Oh god. So it's just gonna be like smoky it's, craziness. It's got some smoke to it. You do okay. pick up the peat, but it's not an unapproachable. All right. Um, we'll, we'll see. Bonfire. And now I get to taste that. Is that what I get to do? You guys are gonna make the cocktails and. You've already tasted it, obviously. Now, yep. you designed this from scratch. You had nothing to go on. Is it based on anything? It's based on several different tiki recipes. Okay. You know, basically that same sort of tiki formula. Sweet. But uh, with scotch, there's not really any tiki scotch cocktails. That's true. It's first tiki, tiki cock. I'm tiki sure somebody, scotch. I'm sure it's been done. No, but. never. <laughs> this is the first time at Lincoln Nod that there's a such thing as a tiki scotch recipe. All right, so what are you going to do? Um, ounce of the scotch to start. Ounce of scotch. That's pretty good. I like an ounce of scotch. Because too much scotch, it, it starts to hurt your inner child real fast. Yeah. Buy uh, it. Yep. Dry or sweet? Both. Half uh, ounce of each. Now did, now, did, now, did Curtis convince you to do both? <laughs> I, I thought the Manhattan is a, was a blend of both or, or something crazy like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like a, if you do a Manhattan and it's perfect. I mean, right yeah. now, in here, is basically a Rob Roy if I throw a little bit of page out in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd be. Can we put a cherry on it and make it non alcoholic version? <laughs> I don't even have any cherries here. So what's that? This is lemon juice. Okay. Always fresh squeeze. Fresh squeeze. That's a good point. If you're making a cocktail, especially if you're a bartender, using freshly squeezed ingredients is awesome. Because what happens is people go to the store, they buy like this cheap off the shelf like mixer, and everything yeah. comes out crappy. And then they go to a bar and they're like, how did you do that? So yeah, it's, you know, generally when you go to somewhere and you're like, wow, the cocktails were amazing, that's one of the main differences. It's the key, key difference? It's fresh and homemade, for instance, this Falernum made by a friend of mine. So now, if that's, so the, does that add a lot of uh, unique, like, you can't get this cocktail anywhere else because it's a homemade Falernum, or is it kind of, does it taste like More it? More or less. Cool? I mean, there's, there's other Falernums that you can get on the market, but when you make it yourself, you can control exactly what type of spice you have in it. This is true. So is there a specific thing that that one goes for? Um, it's not as clovey as some Falernums. Okay. So I think, you know, clove can be a very overpowering flavor. It's very dry. Yes. So I'm going to do three fours of an ounce uh, of that. What's the uh, clove, uh, like the Fee Brothers aromatic bitters, I think. Are those the ones that those taste like you're smoking the clove? Yes. They are a bit much. Some people like them. Sweet. And that's what everything, is? yeah. You got it all? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Watch the ice being put into a cocktail from behind a real bar. Is this your thing, Curtis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so did you buy these at Awesome Drinks, Curtis? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? Oh. Yeah, no. Let's <laughs> try to give you a leg up on that one. Yeah. Did you buy those at, at the, the, the conical strainers? No. No. You bought one for yourself. So, did you ever have a decision to where you wanted to use an egg white, or is that overkill, or? In this one, yeah. I wouldn't. No? No. I don't know any tiki cocktails that really use egg white, so. There's a few. So, no garnish, that's it? That's it. Done? Done. So do we, get to try, do we get to taste it now? Yeah, absolutely. I like the glass. It smells like scotch, a little bit. Sweet scotch, tasty scotch. You need to get the, the peat in the nose. Mm. No, that tastes a lot better than. You don't get you don't get a lot of firewood action. Like yeah. there's not that that smokiness. You get a little bit. Why does it taste like really? Oh, there's a flare and it has like a 
almost like a cinnamon sugar cinnamon, sweet. Cinnamon ginger. Ginger, that's yeah. the one. That's what makes this tiki, ginger. And it's a little spicy. So, I like spicy ginger. So do you like it overall? Yeah, I think it's awesome. Because you don't see a lot of scotch cocktails. And I think most people associate scotch with, I'm sure you get this a lot where people just put, I want it straight on the rocks and you're done. Yeah, I think that, like a lot of um, like tiki drinks and you know cocktails in general don't have scotch because when all the classics were being created, scotch was really unattainable. You know, it's very right. unattainable and kind of unapproachable. And especially with single malts, they get you know to be very very expensive and right. You know, is that a single malt or is that a blended? That is, I honestly don't know. They say it's single malt. It is a single malt. It's a single malt. Oh, it is a single malt. Oh, crap. Yeah, it's a single malt, sixteen year, uh, finished in Orkney. So then this is. This is kind of a a one drink type thing. I don't know if you want to drink too many of these. It's very approachable. It's a it's, little bit scary. It's not a whole. I mean, it's only an ounce of the scotch, so it's not. That's you know, true. So you can not drink. Knock you down. Besides the fact that there's now you get the see. Here's the thing. I don't get any fortified wine taste in this. Everything else is, just kind of overpowers it. It's, it's, yeah. it's filling in a lot of blanks, basically. Yeah, that's and, why I use both. And you use Pechot. And, yep. And, and I don't get a lot of the... A little bit of the anise in there. Yeah, and you don't get... Again, just to fill in some blanks. Yeah, it's it's very... It's an aromatic. It's like a whole bunch of different, like, cocktail, like, flavor explosions that you don't get. The... the I think if you use a cheap vermouth, it would probably destroy it. Yeah. You know, you get like or, that. Or, or a vermouth that's been open for a long time. You know? So how long do you... If you deal with vermouth, how long do you typically call it good? Uh, 10 to 14 days. Depending on how so then my, my 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 uh, eight month vermouth needs to go in the <laughs> yeah. trash. <All> right. <laughs> yes, it is it is spoiled at that point. But if oh. you keep a you know if you keep the air keep keep it from oxidizing, keeping air out of it, and keeping it refrigerated, it makes it last a lot longer. I can deal with that because I do that. I keep it in the refrigerator, but still, it sits in there too long. Like these for you guys, it's different because you probably go through bottles pretty quickly because you're gonna probably be selling a lot of that. But if you have small ones. I use the smaller ones because you... It's a great idea, you know, you get the 375 and, yeah. you know... Yeah, and they're like the tiny little bottles and you can go through it. You can make yeah, 10 of those. Yeah, 12 Manhattans, you know. Sweet. And, and after 12 bottles. Manhattans, you're done. <laughs> That's like a good night. You have a question? Okay. You have a question, Kurt! What is the first experience you had with scotch? First experience with scotch. Everybody who's watching, you need to write what was your first experience with scotch. I'm going to ask you in a second. My first experience with scotch was... I had a really bad experience with Seagram 7, where we were making 7 and 7s, and I was, I was 21, I swear, and we, were, we didn't have 7 up, so we used ginger ale and nobody liked it. So I drank like 8 or 10 of these things, it was real bad, and I haven't been able to touch alcohol since. Scotch was my introduction back to bourbon. I had to go all the way around the morning and come back. But I think I started drinking it because I, I wanted to try scotch because it seems like a, a high-end thing to do and you, you want to like feel like you're mature, but I didn't really do it for any other good purpose besides that. What was your... I got a bottle of uh, <clears throat> Balvini as a gift and I tried it and I really didn't like it. Yeah. So uh, So you drank more of it? I really just like finished it? it. Finished it pretty much with a couple friends in one night. It was a horrible experience. It was a, a while before I went back to Scotch again. And then you went and you I was created... just too young to appreciate it. it this is this is a, a serious issue. It's being too young to appreciate things, and then it destroys your your future with that specific product. Yeah, at least and temporarily. It's all about getting back to those things. Though. Yeah, for me, I had to I had to work my way into it, and now I can even drink Jack Daniels without throwing up at the smell. So that's always a good time. So there you go. That's your question. What was your first introduction to Scotch? Anything else, Curtis? No, that's it. We're done. Yeah. All right, and you are named Brian Mans. Brian, you can see Brian at whenever he works once. You come over to Wink and Nod, South Boston. What is it, 6 Appleton Street? 3. 3 Appleton Street. If you go to 6, you'll fall off the street and you'll end up in a river. So go to 3 Appleton Street in South Boston, Wink and Nod. Meet this guy and a whole knowledgeable team that's going to be able to create cool cocktails with scotch, tiki, all kinds of neat, neat cool things. I enjoy it. That's a good cocktail. So come here. Make, you can either make it at home or come here and do it for you. Have them do it. It'll be awesome. That's it. We're teaching you how to drink.